Well, since I'm telling you, God has been speaking mightily on this broadcast. You know, I'm telling you, those of you that have been changed, we're hearing from you. And thank you for keep watching. By the way, bring more people to this broadcast. You know, if you are being blessed by the order of Makeda television show, if Dr. Miles is being a blessing to you by what's being revealed by the Spirit of God, I want you to help me that every time you watch the net, Word Network, you start texting people and tell them that the mouse is on now so that your friends and family members can begin to watch us. That would mean so much to me. Thank you so much. Praise God. It, but also divvy out of this show because it is powerful. But if you ever made it, miss it, we sometimes re-air it on our YouTube channel, Francis Mouse International. Now, I, I'm going to continue the series on the, the kingdom in the marketplace after this uh, commercial. I'll be right back. is in that crowd part of her is crying for them to choose Jesus over Barabbas but she doesn't understand the mystery of redemption that Jesus did not come to the world to die a normal death because a normal death does not do anything for you and I there should not be any effect of death on any part of your life the actual sign of Pentecost is the power of authorized utterance at a higher level where your words pierce the hearts of people and they can't shake the impression of what you created. Every one of us have a choice. You can choose blessing, you can choose cursing, you can choose life, you can choose death. Either one, every one of us have an opportunity to make a choice. If you're up against principalities and powers in contra de principados, and Satan is knocking you around y el enemigo te está dando contra ti, put praise on in your car. Pon alabanza. Put praise on Por, in your house. You see, God wants you to know today that he wants to pull you somewhere that maybe you don't know what it looks like, but it looks a whole lot better than wherever you at right now. God never changes his mind. He just may take you out of a spot that you should have been in that would have been easier for you, but he'll always put you right exactly where you're supposed to be. I want you to know it's not by your might, it's not by your power, but your spirit is gonna raise up in you and he's gonna take you right through that mountain. Every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the midst of defilement, in the midst of evil, God has a remnant people of Samuels that have been raised in the midst of debauchery, have been raised in the midst of a house that is unclean and impure, and many of you are the Samuels that are being raised up, that your words will not fall on the ground. Hallelujah. I'm so excited that uh, you're going to be praying about joining us at the King's Conference. Kingdom Invasion Gathering of the Saints is our largest conference of the year. Last year we had Pastor Benny Hinn and Bishop Tudor Bismarck. This year I have my dear friend, global international speaker and motivational speaker, uh, Dr. Lance Warnow, uh, Craig Hill, uh, Katie Suzra. Myself, it's going to be an amazing time. Uh, the, 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 the musician who is a master of music, Eddie James and David Folu are going to be there. It's going to be an amazing time of the God encounter. Please 
Mark those dates, October 27th to the 29th. Join us in Atlanta. You can go to my website at events.francismouse.com to find out more. Events.francismouse.com to find out more. Praise God. Now, we began on last broadcast talking about king, kingdom invasion in the marketplace. That the kingdom must invade the marketplace if we are going to change culture. Why? Because the marketplace is very important in the ecosystem of the, of the thriving and the surviving of men. Literally, not, I don't know of any institution, including the church, that would survive if the marketplace uh, was completely destroyed. Because the marketplace is where we do 95% of our activities on the earth are done in the marketplace. As a matter of fact, even what you call your home, who is still listed as an asset on the bank balance or the balance sheet of a bank that you loan the money from. So you may call it your home, but to the bank, all it is is an asset on their book. So, your, so the marketplace can extend right to the house where you live. But we began to talk about Jesus' uh, uh, understanding of the marketplace, which is very, very unique. Luke chapter 7, verse 31 to 32, we are going to continue uh, on, this, on, 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 uh, on this passage because Yeshua buried some powerful nuggets for how the kingdom can invade the marketplace through those of us who are born again, through those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So he said, and the Lord said, to what, to what then shall I liken the men of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We moaned to you, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist came, neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton and wine babbler, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by all her children. I'm telling you, this is an amazing piece by Jesus. This explains why the church has, as, as preachers, who can preach you out of your shoe, and the drug dealers just next to the door don't even know about them. They can preach you out of their shoe, but the neighborhood is going to hell. Because they don't, we don't understand how to cause the kingdom to be translated into where it begins to engage people in the culture. Because we are not very good fishers of men. Because here's what the church does. We preach what we want to preach. We do what we want to do and expect the, the, the world to come after us. But you say, a fisherman who goes, to the, who, who goes to fish with that type of arrogance is going to be sleeping hungry for quite some time. You need to understand what the fish requires and then build a bait around what the fish requires. When you've got it, then you can scale it and then begin to take it to where, it didn't, you, to, to take it to where you want to take it that it, even, it did not even know about. But until you catch it, you can decipher it. So Jesus is trying to get us to a place where the, we, can, we can understand how the kingdom of God can invade the marketplace by the harvesting of the souls of men who are sitting like children in the marketplace by understanding what animates them. And now we can build, we can build a kingdom bait around what they already like to do. So we'll just do a quick review of our last broadcast because I want to add some more, some more baits Jesus is giving us in the text on how the kingdom of God can invade the children who are sitting in the marketplace. He said, uh, uh, he said calling one to another, that means they love to communicate. Social media, Facebook, you know, Instagram, you, know, you name it. 
you know, uh, Rambo, all kind of things like that. A uh, saying, we played the flute for you. Well, that's entertainment. So entertainment, how to use the vehicle of entertainment in order to bring forth the harvest of the souls of men so that they can now be discipled to become ambassadors of the kingdom. And then he says, you did not dance. They love to dance. They love to dance. So all of a sudden, we can use dancing. Can you imagine if we can raise, if a church can raise a professional group of born-again Christian dancers who can dance like, you know, in, in a, who, can, who can produce an act, a Broadway act. You can feel Manhattan with a Christian level if the dancing is to a level that has such a level of excellence, the world will actually pay you to be evangelized by you. I believe the church of the last days is going to be able to do that. You know, I'll never forget the time my wife and I, we went to a concert to go and watch these guys. I believe they were from, they were Irish, you know, the tap dancing. These guys were amazing. Oh my God, it was one and a half hours of nonstop dancing. Said we never thought it's possible for men to, to dance like that, just with their feet. Packed out night after night, lines and lines of cars. Imagine if the church can develop dance groups to that level, not religious dances, but dance groups that are dancing groups whose assignment is to lower the world into a building. Then at the end of the show, just before uh, you close the show, then you allow, you allow all the dancers or a couple of them to give their testimony of how Jesus changed their life. Man, listen, people will begin to realize, oh my God, you mean I can serve Jesus and still be able to perform at that level. Now all of a sudden Jesus becomes attractive to people in the world who are people in the world who never have given Yeshua a second thought because they are, own, they are in their own world. I really believe that Yeshua is giving us models of how we can reach these children who are sitting in the marketplace, the men of this generation. He says, we mourned to you and you did not weep. I said, Lord, what, is, what bait is this? Is it Francis? I'm letting you know this fish is emotional about certain things. So he said to me, instead of just judging the world, find out what the world is emotional about, where they can create active, they are so emotional about certain causes, they create an activism around it. Instead of just trying to shut it down, understand the rage, understand the mourning, understand the frustration, then build a message around how the kingdom addresses what makes them weep. Build a model around how the kingdom solves the very thing they are toy toying for, the very thing they are protesting about. You know, how does the kingdom, you know, how does the kingdom deal with that issue? You know, I know that there were some people that were, you know, you know, you know, that came out against Black Lives Matter, you know, you know. Now every movement is gonna have excesses. Every movement, if man has got anything to do with it, there's going to be excesses. But, but the excesses do not destroy the essence of the message. You know, that there was a group of black people that were feeling defranchised, that were feeling that they're not properly represented in this great American society. Now, how about if the church build a message of the kingdom, a solution for the, for the nation around that issue, take that pain, but then distill it through a message of the kingdom and show the world how the principles of the kingdom can bring, can bring healing to our nation in those areas that the culture is mourning over, is weeping over. That is exactly what Yeshua is saying. He said, don't be quick to judge, be quick to listen, and then find out what that, what's being said. Can you hear the pain? How can you put a message of the kingdom around the pain? Why? Because that may be the bait. 
that is needed for those men to be brought in the kingdom. And when they come in the kingdom and they get discipled, they are working to the fact that, be, be, that there is a society that is way better than the American society or the British society. It is a society called the kingdom of God where all men are created equal, where all men are share one blood, the blood of Jesus, where all men can really connect as brothers and sisters because we've got the spirit of Christ operating inside of us. I want to believe that Yeshua is giving us models. He's giving us models. He's giving us bait. He said, this is how you are going to get the men of this generation. If you come to them and you just say you're going to hell, that's not a message to bring them in the kingdom. You know, it'll push them away. You know, it's, 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 it's a mercy of God. Anybody ever got saved because we, we told them, you're going to hell. That is not a very inspiring message for somebody who's hurting in their life because they feel an injustice has been done to them or different things here and there that have happened in their life. But I believe that the gospel of the kingdom is the antidote to the pains of that ails every human being on earth. It doesn't matter what the pain is. If it's human pain, it is addressed in the gospel of the kingdom. That's why the kingdom must invade the marketplace. Friends, this is why I love my teaching on the order of Melchizedek. Because this is what the Melchizedek order does. It allows us to go beyond the limitations of the four walls of the church and our limited thinking to begin to embrace the world and become stewards of the gospel of the kingdom in the marketplace. I'm looking forward to seeing you as we continue this powerful teaching. And I've written a powerful book that I believe will change your life. My first prayer book, after many years of study, looking at human phenomenon and praying for people in healing and deliverance, this book has finally come together. The book is loaded, my friend, with dangerous prayers. Dangerous prayers because any prayer that works for you is a dangerous prayer to the devil. Well, this book is loaded with 36 different types of prayers on 36 different types of evil altars we have identified that many people deal with around the world. The name of the book is Dangerous Prayers from the Courts of Heaven that Destroy Evil Altars. For more information on this book, visit at DangerousPrayersBook.org and order your copy today at DangerousPrayersBook.org. And as a TV offer to our viewers, for a donation of $35 or more, we will send you Dr. Francis Miles' life-changing book as our appreciation for sawing into this ministry. Saints, I will never stop thanking you for donating to this ministry. There are so many powerful ministries in America and around the world that you can give your money to but you've chosen to, get, to sow your seed in the ministry of Dr. Francis Miles, I am thankful, very, very thankful. And trust me, I pray over the seed that come in the ministry. As a matter of fact, we've established a phoning ministry where we actually call our donors. So actually most of the people who give into our ministry get a phone call where somebody from the ministry prays with them. And sometimes I do what I call drive-by phone calls. You might be surprised that I'm the one who calls you for giving to this ministry. Now, we have been on a powerful teaching and series on the kingdom, kingdom invasion in the marketplace. Kingdom invasion in the marketplace. That the kingdom wants to invade the marketplace because the truth of the matter is God wants to answer uh, the prayer of Jesus. When you pray, pray this way, our Father which is in heaven, allowed be thy name, thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. So God knows the only way the kingdom can come on earth as it is in heaven is if we as children of God do a better job uh, about representing the kingdom as an alternative reality to all the pain, the frustration uh, that the people are going through in the world we live in. The kingdom of God must be seen as an alternative reality, a better reality to the one that they have without Yeshua in their life. 
Now, I was, we were going through the different baits that the Lord is giving us in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 31 and 32. He's giving us amazing baits we can use to reach these fish of men that are lying like children in the marketplace. In the marketplace. I really believe that the greatest harvest of men the world has ever seen is not going to be inside a stadium listening to a Billy Graham or a Renard Banky type of personality. As much as important as that is, I believe the last day revival is a revival of Christians in the marketplace, becoming aware of their own destiny, becoming aware of their responsibility to become fishers of men in their clinics, in their chiropractic offices, in, their, in, their, in your auto shop, you know, and beginning to display the, uh, display the goodness of God in those uh, vehicles of commerce the Lord has given you. I believe that the last day revival has a lot to do with the kingdom invading the marketplace. That's why I want you to really listen to this teaching because I believe you are being prepared for what God is about to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. So in verse 33, Jesus is still talking about reaching men and women who are sitting like children in the marketplace. But it does not look like it is in the text, but it's really the same thought. And I'm going to help you interpret it so you do not miss the strategies Yeshua was giving us on how to reach the children who are sitting in the marketplace. Because these are the fishers of, these are the fishmen that the Lord wants us to bring into his kingdom. So the Bible says this in verse 83, For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. So it's very interesting. Yeshua says, listen, what do you, you got to make up your mind how you're going to reach the world. Because it says John the Baptist came, like Lino you know, came. He had a lifestyle that you, you, that you would think you guys would approve of. He, you know, he lived in the desert. You know, he ate bread. He didn't drink wine. You know, and, he, and, and you say he had a demon. But then he says this, verse 34. The son of man, that means himself, has come eating and drinking. And you say, look, a glutton and a wine babbler, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But then he says, but wisdom is justified by all our children. Dr. Miles, what does this mean? This is amazing stuff. So Jesus is saying, listen, I'm showing you how to, I'm, I'm showing you how to reach men. But your religious mindset is trying to reject the apostolic strategies I'm trying to give you on how to reach men, how to harvest men into the kingdom. He says the, the lifestyle of Jesus that they were rebuking was actually how he was winning souls. He says he has come, the Son of Man has come, notice, eating and drinking, eating and drinking. That means, listen, he's telling you, listen, so it is, you know, there is nothing, this, some of these people, want another way that you're going to reach them is know how to wine and dine them. You know, listen, I, I, I have paid for people. I have, you know, listen, we've got to stop this thing of the only people that go to restaurants with you are tongue-speaking Christians. Then who are you reaching? Sometimes you should take your neighbor out. Yes, he smokes a cigars. Wait, wait, yes, he does whatever, but they are your neighbors, you know? Instead of, you know, going on, on, their, on their door and knocking on their door, uh, you know, and open up the Bible, that may not be attractive, but take them to a fancy restaurant where it's $50 a plate or $100 a plate. It's a good food. The ambience is nice. And you come and just treat them. Listen, even if you don't even mention Jesus, you will shift how they look at you. The next time you talk about Jesus, they, wanna, they are willing to listen. Why? You bought the attention with the $100 pay plate restaurant uh, uh, excursion you took them to that you paid for. Since I believe that those who win souls must be wise. And I believe God is going to be causing, is going to cause us to be wise. You see, the Pharisees never spend time with sinners. Then how do you reach sinners if you have no sinner friend? He said, you are accusing me of being a gluttonous because I eat. It's not, I like, the Lord said, it's not that I like to eat. I eat because they like to eat. What they are eating, what you don't know, is what I'm saying to them in spending time with them while they are eating. 
See, when people are eating, they are captive audience until they finish. <laughs> you know, and a lot of things comes out when people are eating. That's what he's saying. He said, you are a friend of tax collectors. You are a friend of sinners. What is he saying? He said, if you are going to become master fishermen, who are going to harvest men, who are sitting like children in the marketplace, then you have to learn the art of becoming a friend of sinners. My friend, you cannot let sin, in sin become more powerful than your ability to show other people the love of God. Man, listen, if spending time with someone who's, if, if eating on the table with somebody that, yes, you know she's a prostitute or you know is a drug dealer, you know, you know, if spending time with them and just having a meal with them is big, is, is, is corruptive enough, it will take the anointing out of you, you don't have much anointing to talk about in the first place. Jesus was a friend of sinners. He went out of his way to befriend sinners. Why? He came to save sinners. Hello? He came to save sinners. But you'd be amazed how many Christians would be uncomfortable at the, at the, at the restaurant if they, are, if they are sitting next to somebody whose lifestyle is not that very good, you know, because what about if my, my church friends see me? Are they going to think I'm backslidden? No. Who cares? If you in your heart you know this is a tool of evangelism, you are trying to reach them for Christ, then you are doing what Jesus was talking about. May God help us know how to bring kingdom invasion to the marketplace. In the next broadcast, I'm going to end our series by showing you how we can reach men by bringing kingdom models of business to the marketplace of business. It's going to be amazing. Dear you this service, and I'll see you next week when you conclude this powerful teaching. Praise God. I am excited whenever I get this moment to be able to tell you about some of my other life-changing teachings that unfortunately cannot appear on television. You said on the mouse, why? Because there's no time. These, these revelations are so life-changing. They are so intense. They deserve the time to break them piece by piece so your life can be changed. I have such a teaching on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook. This teaching is entitled Tithing for Divine Interception. My God, Tithing for Divine Interception. Whenever have you ever been told that your tithe could be used by God to create a supernatural climate of divine interception in your life? What do I mean by divine interception? Well, divine interception simply means God gets to you before the devil can take you out. How do you like that? See, the problem with many of us, God is coming to rescue us. God is tired of coming into rescue missions on our behalf because we're already in trouble. But you see, what about if God could intercept us, get to us before the devil can take us out? What about if I told you that tithing under the order of Melchizedek was divine to create a climate of divine interception for you and your family? My God, I'm telling you, it'll change your life. If you go to Francis Mouse International on YouTube, subscribe. You never miss these teachings. And then you go to Facebook, to Dr. Francis Mouse, go to my page, follow. I tell you, not miss anything I'm doing on those social media platforms, including this message. You'll be happy that I talked about it because it will change your life. Amen.